Welcome to the Queens on Decks, where I interview female DJs from around the world. I am Michelle Miller, your host of the Royal Queens Rising podcast. We share our inspiring stories and secrets to our success. everybody on DJ Run That. Today I have a very special guest, DJ Jess. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you for being here. So I'd love to start out the interviews with a little bit of your story on how you started DJing. Oh, here we go. You ready for this one? So my career officially started in a place called Edinburgh, Pennsylvania, which is near Erie. It's in the north part of Pennsylvania towards Canada. And I went to college in Edinburgh. So it's small. There's about three or four bars at the college. There's the one that everybody goes to, to dance pretty much. So that's where I went because I love to dance. And I was requesting a lot of music. And thankfully the bar owner, Pat is his name. Yeah, he's still the owner. So the place is called the hotel. The bar owner's name was Pat. He hired female DJs. The DJ that was there at the time was my sorority sister. So I kept requesting like a lot of Obi Trice. I think there was just a lot of Obi Trice involved. I always say that because I credit Obi Trice for this. And she said to me, oh girl, you should be a DJ. You know, good music. So I was like, all right, let's do this. I started DJing then. That was like, it was about 15 years ago that I started DJing. And it was $40 a night, free beer, which was cool. And, you know, I use CDs. I'm not going to lie that I made them from Napster and BearShare and would just bang out a bunch of CDs from like different local radio stations, billboards and such. And, you know, just kind of messed around with the dual CD player. Didn't really do a lot of mixing, but it was cool. I programmed a lot. That's like the style. That's how it started my programming. Oh, I love that. Oh, it was so amazing when Napster was launched and music went digital. I went crazy. I still have my little CDs, my little compilations where on the Sharpie and my friends still have them from like, how many years ago was that? Like Uh 20? (laughs) Yeah. My friends still have mine too. I found out later on that like, I would always make CDs for people. I didn't even remember this, but I ran into somebody when I was at an event, it was in January and she goes, girl, you're the one that turned me on to Alanis Morissette. Now you gave me that CD. I'm like, oh really? So same thing. (laughs) Oh, I love it. I love it. And now look at you now, Jess, you're like superstar. I am a big fan of yours. (laughs) Oh, I can girl with you too. Yeah. So, you know, you and I have been in a mommy DJ mastermind through COVID that I started and you said, yes, I will join. And it's been such an amazing thing. And what an experience it's been for us as moms during COVID. You can't DJ out. For me, that was like a little bit of my getaway, my me time, even though I was working. But that was like a break from the day-to-day routines, home life. And all of a sudden we became, we went from mobile DJs to homeschool teachers. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the challenges we've been through. Homeschool. I'm already thinking about what's going to happen this school year. So I have a five-year-old and a six-year-old, both boys. Their names are Finn and Rowan. And when this all hit the last day of school for Finn, who was in kindergarten was March 13th. It was a half day. I'll never forget that day. And um, he came home. There was no work at first, really, while the teachers and the staff got everything organized. But then eventually there was an online platform on Google, Google Education or something it was called. And they would log on to there and they had all these assignments to complete. And I'm just like, oh, my gosh, you know, like, mind you, I have a a, a master's in teaching that I'm not using. So you think I'd be like, oh, I'm putting my money to work. You know what I mean? Yeah. But. At first, okay, so I like went hard. I was like, all right, what are we going to do? I'm going to set up this six schedule, like, you know, from eight to nine, I'm going to, I'm going to do me time. And then from nine to 10, it's going to be like reading and phonics. And then we're going to switch over to like gym class. And I'm like thinking about how I can do that. I'm like, where's my classroom going to be? Like, I started taking on all this stuff and I'm like, you know, I, I like went big and then I actually tried to do it. And I'm like, wait a second, this is like an eight hour school day that I'm planning. How the heck am I going to work? Like, I didn't even think about it. So I did that for three days, like legit, like did like the full-time school for three days. And then I'm like, no, that's not happening. I think that I work best in the morning. So I know that I want to give myself at least two hours to do whatever I have to do, whether that's client communications, getting creative with marketing and branding, prepping for a gig, music organization, learning a new CRM. Like I just knew I had all these goals. So I laid out my goals 
gave myself two hours and then spent an hour with them online and realized that we could just get through it like that, that it wasn't, I didn't need to make it as hard, you know? So I just kind of simplified it, figured out what he needed to learn and just got him done with the assignments that he had. And my other one was in preschool. So I would just throw him a paper to like trace N's or Z's or X's for a while while we did that. So that's how everything ended for last school year, but this coming school year, and we'll see what happens with that. Yeah, I feel like nobody really knows until it's a law, until they're like, this is it. Like, I'm not like tuning into like, well, we might do this, we might do that, we might do this, we might do that. Because I'm like, okay, just tell me when it's time to go. <laughs> like, what do I need to do? <laughs> yeah, our school district sent out a survey um, two weeks ago about, and I know that Columbus did this too. My best friend lives in Columbus. She's a teacher there. So she told me, hey, you know, this is coming. I wonder if Pennsylvania is going to follow it too. But the survey basically tried to figure out like how you felt about precautions such as masks, you know, riding buses. If you would send them on a bus, would you choose to send them part-time? Would you choose to school them from home? So my gut is telling me it's going to be more virtual education, at least for me with the schedule that I have. So I am going to give it two weeks because that's how I'm doing this thing is like two week by two week. You know, I don't want to make too many plans because things change every yeah. day, literally every day. And then I just know that I want to turn what should be my dining room into a classroom. Like I am going to do that. <laughs> I am going to go big with that and like have like a place for things and have organization and then figure out timing again, maybe working on a babysitter so that I can still have some working time. I mean, it's I've been looking forward to this. I mean, I'm not going to lie. You vibe with me. Like you said, this is our time away, right? Like at least active work, but I've been looking forward to both of my kids being in school. So I can just go so hard on the back end administrative stuff that I've always wanted to do while I've been at home with them. So that kind of stinks <laughs> that, you know, things are changing, but I love them. I just, I just really want to like, I want to lay out all my posts for social media and get like really creative with the, with the grid and stuff, you know, I just like take the time to do things that I've never had the time to do. Yeah. Well, I want to give you a lots of props and credit because girl, you've been doing amazing things during you. this quarantine, my corn queen. <laughs> That's so true. You too, dude. I can't sit here and take compliments from you without telling you how amazing you are too. So Oh, well, thank you. You've done just some really amazing things. Like you've DJed a prom, you DJed for your child's class, you <laughs> did a freaking parade. Like, what? <laughs> let's talk about the parade. You're in the news, you've been in the media. You did what was that? Um, the dance challenge something you did. Um Oh, in my kitchen. Yeah, you were like on the news for that. <laughs> oh, the lip sync challenge started by Josh Staley in Columbus. Yeah, he started the lunch break lip sync challenge. And I was like in a weird place, like mentally. So I'm like, all right, let me have fun with this. And I used um, Sinead O'Connor's Nothing Compares. And I like did my makeup with like this stuff, you know, the mascara running down. I was in my bathroom and I was lip syncing. Yeah, I forgot about that. Oh my God, there's been so much. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you were like on TV for that. And then you were in the newspaper for the parade. I mean, that's just awesome. So let's talk a little bit about the parade because that was pretty epic that you guys took that on. Yeah, that was sweet, man. I can't take credit for uh, coming up with that. I mean, I did have an idea where I wanted to drive around on the back of a truck and DJ on Memorial Day because my town has this epic parade and it's like my thing every year. Like I'm there like two hours beforehand saving my spot. So I'm like this year, I'm going to DJ on the back of a truck. But then Willie Thies came up with the idea. He's from a company called Second to None Productions in Pittsburgh. And they're a multi-op. They're amazing. Great group of people. But he thought of the idea, brought it to all the Pittsburgh DJs where for one day, all of us would hit up different areas in Pittsburgh and just basically bring music to the streets just to spread happiness so we worked it all out. We had about, I think, 25 DJs and 25 routes. And we all kind of chose respective areas to where we grew up that we knew. So I was in um, my immediate area of North for Sales in White Oak, which is a, a, a suburb east of Pittsburgh, about 20 minutes. And we also did West Mifflin and Duquesne. Bill Jacob was my driver. I was in the back of his truck. He's from PBU Event Group here in Pittsburgh, too. And I was on the back of a truck literally for eight and a half hours. Just, we had like a route we were supposed to follow and we tried to follow it, you know, going up and down hills. And mind you, it was May 8th, I think, something like that. And it freaking snowed in Pittsburgh. Like it was like 20 degrees that day. 
and windy. So, you know, we have all the speakers in the back of the truck and a generator and my laptop. And like, I've got like mittens on and stuff. And I'm just like trying to like hold my computer so the wind doesn't blow it down. It was insane, but people had a great time. And, you know, we also, we advertise it on Facebook and a lot of those Facebook groups for, for areas that people have, where they talk about things going on in their town. So we advertise them there and asked for them to tell us where to go if they were celebrating a birthday and anniversary. So I had a few different spots that we went to. There was one woman and her husband that had their 33rd anniversary. So we stopped by there and played their, their first dance song. And then we also went to two places that had a graduation and a birthday party. And I got to make some money from that, which was, that was nice, but oh man, it was such a good day. Like that was the first time DJing in so long. It had been like two months since I had received energy from putting energy out. And I just like felt like, oh, you know, <laughs> I'm back <laughs> for a little bit. But yeah, that was really dope. Oh, well, that is just amazing. I, I've also wanted to DJ on the back of a truck and be in a parade. We did do a float one year. My friend set it up, but we did not have the full DJ system. That's definitely something on my list. So that's awesome. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you were amazing. You were a guest DJ for my virtual DJ birthday party yeah. on Zoom, and my friends loved you. We were definitely yeah. feeling your vibes. There was a lot of feedback <laughs> there and we got to collaborate and do some online virtual parties together. So I think that's one of the positive things about what has been going on with COVID is that it's allowed more networking online and more collaborations and sharing our skill, you know, showing the world our talent and our style. And I've gotten to listen to so many different DJs and like to be able to collaborate with you and the other ladies, like we did our Tiger Queens party. That was a lot of fun. A lot of learning though, a lot of learning for this live streaming, the equipment, the sound and internet connections and all of that. And then also like how to monetize on it because most of us, that's been our main source of income. So let's talk a little bit about what's what's going on next for you. What's happening uh, where you're at? What is next, right? Gosh, I think that's been like weighing on my mind these past two weeks because where we're at and where I'm at in Allegheny County in Pittsburgh, the case is according to the media, you know, there's so many different perspectives out there, but I am just going to talk about what is being communicated from the news. I'm not going to put in my perspective at all, but the cases are on the rise. They've been traced back to a uh, few bars that are in the college towns. You know, we have we have a, a, a nice collection of colleges here in Pittsburgh. And that's what they're saying. These certain areas at the bars, nobody's wearing masks. Everybody's kind of real close together and that they're tracing them back to there. So because of those findings, according to the media and different studies that they're, they're reporting on, they have decided that bars are no longer allowed to serve alcohol. Restaurants are not allowed to serve alcohol. And they actually just aired a small segment on our news channel where one of the reporters took that and connected it to weddings and venue, you know, event venues and private venues. So she said, yes, indeed, this does, this does hold true for having a wedding at somebody, you know, at a private or, a, you know, an event space, basically. So that means dry weddings. I don't know what brides and grooms and, you know, couples are going to want to do with that. So I am just sitting and waiting and seeing what happens next. Right now, I feel in limbo. I feel somewhere in the gray area right now. I'm not in the black or the white of going and moving forward and doing anything. I'm just kind of, I can feel that there's a change happening. Whether that means we're going to go back into yellow, which there is speculation that we're going to go back. So I just, I can feel it. So right now, I don't have any solid plans of what's next. I'm going to give myself a couple days to just kind of let this wash over me. And then I will reevaluate Obviously there's the live, the live streaming, the live events. Uh, I mean, the online events. I know that I want to go live on Facebook. I can feel it in my bones that I, I, I need to perform. So I'm going to probably work on that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel you. We just don't know what's going to happen. So yeah. it's like day by day, you know, keep listening to music because we need that. <laughs> exactly, man. That's what I, I don't feel like doing anything right now. So that's just my go-to, which I think we've spoke about before. Maybe it was, I think it may have been whenever we met for the QSC chat but me you and Kristen Wilson we spoke about like if you don't feel like doing any work a good place to go to is music because <laughs> it's therapeutic and it's work so yay 
<laughs> Absolutely. You can always just do that. You can do it from anywhere <laughs> in bed. That's what I was just doing. I'm not even playing. I was laying in bed, making sure I drink water because I'm feeling tired, looking at DMS, like, what should I do? Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. The um, mix for DMS, definitely be yeah. checking for that. Awesome. Yeah. Well, wonderful. How can we connect with you online? Oh yeah. Check out Instagram. That's been a quarantine goal of mine is to grow my followers. I don't know why, but I want to. (laughs) So that's DJ Jess 412, which is the area code for Pittsburgh. Cause there's a lot of DJ Jesses out there. I didn't think about that when I was branding. Um, and then I'm also on Facebook at DJ Jess 412. That's basically me across the board. I just kept that 412. So Mixcloud, YouTube, those need work. So maybe don't go there, but go to Instagram for sure, which I've kind of fallen quiet on. I just kind of got sick of, you know, staying active and stuff. So, but I have a plan coming up. I'll have to share with you later. Awesome. Well, you know, from what I've learned and, and heard is that it's engagement that gets you more followers and you know what I believe in is more video and mm-hmm. you can, I think you're doing a great job I, I was <laughs> well that's okay yeah. that's okay you'll get back at it for sure um, yeah well wonderful well thank you so much for being on the show today thank you everybody for tuning in and stay tuned for more episodes Go to my website to claim your free gift, a digital copy of my best-selling book, How to Start a DJ Business, www.djrundat.com. Follow me on all social media handles, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch at DJ Rundat. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. To learn how you can book me or work with me, go to my website, or email me at michelle at djrundat.com. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and leave a review.